Hey guys, so as you can see, uh, there's not an engine in my car right now. Uh, it's actually right over here. So what happened was uh, when I put this motor together like 27,000 miles ago, um, I I was still learning back then and I put, a, put one of the head gaskets on upside down and then uh, realized it when I did the other head and so then I took it back off, flipped the gasket, put it back together, and I thought it was fine, and it lasted a while. It lasted two years and 27,000 miles of daily driving and fucking racing and road tripping and all kinds of stuff. But uh, it has failed me now. It started burning coolant on startup. Uh, the longer I let it sit, the more white smoke comes out of the exhaust, but only while it's cold and then it goes away. It also has like a slight misfire, so... We're just going to go ahead with the 25D head swap, um, which we have everything for right here. Uh, so I have all the cams and everything laid out. We've got the 25D heads all resurfaced, and um, can't really see it from this angle. I'll have to grab the head and flip it around, but we got the oil drain, uh, the coolant feed, both drilled in the back of the head for the turbo stuff. Um, so I'll have to buy some fittings for that. Uh, I got valve cover gaskets and uh, so because these are 2.5 liter heads the combustion chamber is just a little bit bigger and it lowers the compression from 8.0 to 1 to I think like 7.5 to 1 which is not really ideal for power out a boost so these are custom head gaskets you can order from Cometic uh, let's see they are part number C4263040. Uh, so that's a zero or zero point zero four zero inch uh, gasket, which is basically one millimeter down from I think one point six is stock. So that uh, mathematically should raise the compression ratio back to eight point zero to one. Uh, so it'll have stock compression ratio. I got uh, some STI injectors. Uh, I ordered these off eBay. They're they were shipped from Hong Kong, Hong Kong, uh, but they say they were OEM and they have numbers on them. So I think they're OEM. Uh, I think they're remands, though. Um, and then the other thing to deal with is the intake manifold. You have to use the 2.5 intake manifold, and that has EGR. So uh, these went to the machine shop as well because um, we're doing two of these. So we have two sets of everything. Um, chopped the EGR off and he welded it shut. He also put in a port here uh, for a boost source and so that'll make this usable. And then on top of that we have a TDO5, a CX Racing actually, TDO5 16G big turbo uh, that has the same inlet and outlet size as the TDO4. Um, but it should make quite a bit more power. Um, people call these the ultimate street turbo for like a 2 liter WRX, so why not a 2.2 liter? Um, this was extremely cheap. This is an eBay turbo from CX Racing. It was $243, I believe. Um, it did come with a balance sheet. It's balanced to like 120,000 RPM, so it might not last forever, but I don't really have a thousand dollars to spend on a nice turbo, so I'd rather just get one of these, and then if it ever did blow, I would just have like Blausch or someone rebuild it for uh, I think like 500 bucks, and then it would actually be like a, a nice turbo. Um, but it, it's shiny, so it'll do the job for now, see how long it lasts. Also, this is my ceramic six buck clutch that I was running, and uh, I've always hated this fucking thing, because it just... it shakes the whole car, it chatters like crazy. Um, I was planning on reusing it since I'll be making quite a bit more power and this clutch is already overkill, but uh, I don't know if you can see this, these grooves in here, there's like a ton of metal taken out of the pressure plate and the flywheel is just as bad, just tons of material taken out, so I'm gonna go ahead and get a new clutch set up. Uh, I'm considering trying an 06 uh, WRX or 06 plus like 06 to 14 WRX uh, flywheel and clutch like a stage 2 so that I don't have to go ceramic so it'll be a little bit nicer but it'll be good to like just over 300 horsepower and uh, the only question is will that work with my cable 
uh, my cable clutch old uh, transmission with the older style throw out bearing because they updated the throw out bearing style for those newer WRXs. So I'm pretty sure that this diameter is the same, if not bigger. So I, I believe it'll work. Um, but I think I might end up just ordering a clutch because I can't find anyone who's actually put power through this transmission. Most people with my car use a turbo transmission. This is a non-turbo transmission. The turbo transmission would have been a pull style hydraulic uh, clutch that you can use any 02 to 05 WRX clutch for, uh, for sure. But not many people, no one that I can find, has put a newer, where they switched back to push style, uh, clutch setup in this transmission with the cable stuff still running it. So. I hope it works, but I guess I'll find out. So this engine, uh, for the 30,000 miles that I've been running it, uh, has had a slight knocking noise. Um, it wasn't quite uh, like a rod knock. It's just like while you're part throttle, uh, it makes like a like a slight knocking noise, but it, it never got worse. I drove the absolute shit out of it for quite a few miles, like a lot more miles than rod knock would ever last. So. I don't. I, I didn't think it was rod knock. I kind of attributed it to a piston slap, uh, since the block has been rebuilt. But what I found was that the tensioner, I can actually push in by hand. So this tensioner is just complete crap. And what I'm hearing at at uh, part throttle, at pretty much any RPM except for high RPM, is uh, this tensioner just just rattling because uh, it's not holding pressure on it. So. I think it's fine under load, but as soon as the load comes off, it, it sits there and shakes. So uh, That I'm actually very glad about, because that means that the short block should be good to go. I won't be splitting the block. I'll, I can just do the straight up head swap. So, uh, the funny thing about, uh, so these are 22T injectors, and they're 370cc. And you can buy uh, Japanese 440cc WRX. Uh, I believe WRX injectors might be STI, I'm not sure, like older STI, um, but side feed 440s, and they will drop right in these rails, uh, but 550 side feeds will not, because they're a larger diameter, um, but with the 2.5 manifold, which I can't use these the 2.2 fuel rails on the 2.5 manifold, but with the 2.5 fuel rails, which I have around here somewhere, uh, STI, newer STI 550cc injectors drop right in. So that's why I went with those. Um, I'll also be getting my tune through a guy, uh, his name is Rob. He has a business called Rob Tune. He basically takes your uh, first gen legacy ECU and uh, he, he'll either chip it for you and uh, you send him like your all your specs and what turbo and what injectors and all that and how much boost and he basically makes you a tune. Or you can also buy a, a JDM EJ20G ECU that plugs right in, with the exception of having to modify the igniters because that's a coil over plug engine. This is coil on top. So um, I think I'm going to be mailing him my ECU to just straight up tune it. So it should be less wiring. Uh, I'll probably have to put in a neutral switch because I don't have a neutral switch. And I believe for the launch control you have to have a neutral switch i'm not totally sure yet i emailed him but he hasn't gotten back to me so um but that's around 330 dollars for that and it seems like my best option i've heard nothing but but good stuff about him so the other things uh that you need for this head swap is you need the 25d coolant crossover pipe that goes across the top of the block uh, the reason for that i guess is because these sensors here on the 2.2 uh, turbo one, well, they're on this side instead of being over by the turbo, just so for accessibility. But those sensors, apparently, this one in particular, runs into the something on the intake manifold, so you can't actually bolt it down all the way. Or if you did, you wouldn't be able to put the connector on. So I'll be using the 2.5 uh, coolant crossover pipe and extending this wire over to reach over here and using obviously the whole 2-2 wire harness on the 2-5 manifold. We're also using the 2-2 uh, throttle body on the 2-5 uh, manifold. And the only issue with that that I found, which no one mentioned online, is uh, I had to have the machine shop add some weld right here and grind it flat, and I'm still going to go back and file it a little more. Um, 
but that is just because there's a small hole basically that shows right here from the throttle body and although the gasket covers it uh, I do believe it would leak boost so um, we'll also be using the 2.2 liter idle air control valve for this uh, because it points upward rather than a non-turbo one points straight and that's kind of an issue in such a tight place so and I'm going to be running my intake uh, up and out to the side just like I was with this setup um, I haven't obviously put the intake manifold or the heads on yet so I haven't test fit it yet but I don't think it'll have too much of an issue uh, the only other option is doing a parallel fuel rail mod to get all this crap in here out of the way and then either not running a power steering pump or getting a WRX power steering pump uh, to allow the intake to go through. Um, and I'm not really a fan of those intake setups. I work on them a lot at work and they're a pain in the ass and I fucking hate them. So I'm gonna try and keep it simple and just run the intake up and out like I was. So it might I mean, people say, oh, it's a little bit of a restriction, but you know what, if it's easier to work on, and considering how much I work on this car, I'd rather have it just be a little bit down on power and be that much easier to work on. Uh, I mean, this thing is already fast enough uh, with the intake running how it was before, so it should be fast as shit now, and I should be plenty happy with it. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna force myself to run the intake underneath. I picked up this engine hoist uh, from Harbor Freight for 130 bucks. It was, we had a coupon come in the mail, so, and I needed one. I'd rather just buy one than rent one. Um, I did not realize how short it is. I don't know if you can tell, but it basically comes up to, like, right around my nipple in height, and it uh, is actually not very long either, so it almost uh, hit the bumper right here just trying to grab the engine to pick it up so um, a bigger engine hoist would definitely be nice I know that Harbor Freight does have a larger one uh, for more money but I mean this works fine for Subarus but I would never use it for like a V8 or an LS or anything like that um, it's just not it's not tall enough it's not long enough and as you extend this out it's no longer one ton, yeah, I'm on quarter ton, and that's full length, and it's not even very long. So, definitely recommend a larger engine hoist than I just bought. So at this point, uh, I believe we're going to start the teardown on the, on the actual motor. I'm going to get the intake manifold off uh, with the whole wire harness and everything. Just got to disconnect the coolant lines for the throttle body and the IAC, and then take the bolts out and... Uh, there's a couple other vacuum lines and some stuff to take off. Uh, we'll get the intake manifold out of the way, then we'll flip it over, get the ex er, sorry, then get the turbo off, then flip it over, get the exhaust off, and I'll just leave my whole up pipe and wastegate as one. Uh, this is just a CNT up pipe that I got off eBay for, or it might have been Amazon, I don't remember. Uh, it was like 100, 170 bucks, I think. Um, and then I have a legit tile wastegate uh, that I bought for, I think, like 260 uh, And I'll be changing the spring out in this. Right now I run straight spring pressure for boost control, um, and it's been absolutely awesome. Like, it's just, I have a 9-pound spring in here, and it is exactly 9 pounds. Like, never, ever moves. Um, and it's just really consistent, and I like running straight spring. So I'll probably swap this out for either a one bar or just over one bar spring so probably like probably be around like 15 to 16 psi i'm not really sure yet i gotta hopefully talk to rob the tuner and see how much boost he thinks that this setup will take because uh, i am running the stock 2.2 internals although people have made a lot more horsepower than i plan on making on the stock 2.2 internals i don't i want this engine to last a long time i don't want it to uh be unreliable so if i have to run a little bit less boost to make it last longer on my crappy eBay turbo and all my other crap, I'll be fine with that. Exciting is that I finally get to put on my uh, Megan Racing reinforced motor mounts uh, that I've been waiting to put on and they're basically impossible to, to put on in the car. It's such a pain in the ass I might as well pull the motor to do it. So now I have the motor out, so it'll be a good time to do that, so I'm excited. A lot of people say when you do this head swap to swap the 2.5 oil pan over as well. Um, 
However, we were comparing 2.5 oil pans. Uh, we've got a couple of them. This is 2.5 and that is a 2.2 one. And with them side by side, they are exactly identical. Uh, we can't, I mean, the baffling is the same. Everything is the same. The shape on the outside is the same. So I think the oil pan is actually the same. Um, and I, so I looked up the oil capacity of the 2.5 liter, which is a 97 to 99 EJ25D uh, from like an Outback or a Legacy GT. And it actually uh, holds 4.7 quarts, according to Mitchell. And the 2.2, turbo or not, is 4.8 quarts. So uh, I'm just going to be leaving the 2.2 oil pan on. I know people that have done it, and it's fine. So I, I don't think I'll have an issue. All right, so we pulled that off. So now we need to pull the wiring harness off of the old manifold and start unplugging everything. So we just wanted to show uh, the difference in the intake runners. So if I hold this part flat with the edge there, you can see it's that much bigger all the way up there. It's like, I don't know, like close to a centimeter bigger on each port. Jesus, it's really stuck on there. joint for my up pipe is right in the way of this nut. With the heads off, uh, I can see some stuff that I did not really want to see, which is all these lines right here. And it looks like there's a little bit of pitting, like maybe from rust at some point, not really sure. Um, I didn't notice anything like that when I put this engine together originally. I bought this engine as a, a rebuilt short block uh, with resurfaced heads and I just assembled everything and threw it together. So I didn't actually put this block together uh, myself. So that's not really what I was hoping to see, is those lines. It did run good and make good power, other than having the blown head gasket. So um, there's sure also, the piston slap. I'm not really sure if this is a normal amount of piston slap, but if I pull it all the way one way, you know, they film straight down. You can see the piston does rock quite a bit, but I don't know if that's a normal amount. Um, not really sure. Uh, so. We're probably going to be just just uh, using this block as is. Um, it, I didn't really want to see those marks, and that basically means that it might not last for as long as I would hope. Uh, hopefully it lasts like another 60,000 miles or whatever um, before I have to actually go through and re-hone it myself and re-ring it and everything. Um, but. Uh, in the next episode, we'll be throwing the heads on and probably the intake manifold and crossover pipe and all the, the actual head swap stuff. Uh, so I'm a little disappointed, but um, at least we got a lot done. So. Okay, well, thanks for watching and uh, subscribe if you want to follow our 25D head swap on the 22T.